Hello, this is Stuart Tan from worldofnlp.com bringing to you selectional restriction violations as part of our NLP language patterns training. So if you've missed the other four, please head down to worldofnlp.com. So what exactly is a selectional restriction? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples. In classical linguistics, I could say the dog was happy and it makes perfect sense. I could even say the child was happy and still makes perfect sense. But when I say the rock was happy or the napkin was happy, there's some something weird about it, isn't it? So the first two have um, not violated anything, but the other two have got some kind of violation. So in other words, the word happy needs to selectionally restrict itself in association with certain characteristics. So let's take a look at what those are. Think of a dog and child. What commonalities are there? Um, well, most likely because they are animate objects and because they can display emotion, and that's why the feature of happiness can appear in front of them. So the word happy can be associated with dog or child. However, think of rock and napkin. Can you actually associate happy with it? Because these two are inanimate objects, you could say that you know, there's no way they can uh, express emotion and therefore there's no way they can be happy. So essentially, this is a selectional restriction. But when we deliberately say this, the rock was happy. That creates a violation by which a certain kind of hypnotic influence tends to occur at an unconscious level. So these unconscious processes take place by way of association or correlation. In other words, just by saying women fire and dangerous things, this creates an association. It does not mean that uh, women are directly uh, create, uh, you know, troublesome, but by way of presumption and assumption, this specific title, which happens to be the title of a book, um, is actually uh, associated amid these other two categories. So when you use cause and effect, however, you can hear, like for instance, the sound of, let's say, jaws, and you can hear doo doom, doo doom, and that kind of creates maybe a sensation of fear in some people. Uh, still, you can hear the theme song from the Titanic and suddenly feel bundles of love and romantic notions begin to come up because those were uh, made associated and therefore, by virtue of the fact that that music plays, it has a certain emotional effect on you. So those are unconscious processes. How do we do this in, an, in a linguistic form? So when someone experiences work, and they feel bad, and this is rehearsed over and over again, then it takes on a cause and effect relationship. However, what we want to do is to be able to get people to feel this way instead. So how do we actually go about doing it? Well, so let's take a look at some of the linguistic processes that take place within the selectional restriction violation process. First of all, there's a setup. So for instance, someone walks in and says that he's got a lot of stress because there's plenty of paperwork to do. So what I could say is only paper can stack itself so comfortably. So I've associated the linguistic approach to context and make it as elegant as I possibly can in this current process. Of course, there are many other ways to make it elegant. All it takes is a little bit of rapport building and making it not sound as if you're trying to overpower or manipulate the person into thinking differently. So once you've got a setup done, then you can create associations. You can say, even a stack of paper can feel good, aren't you, John? And because you're utilizing certain other elements in uh, the, the linguistic patterns in NLP, um, you'll notice that some of these modals, for instance, the phrase, the tag question, aren't you, John, it doesn't seem grammatically correct. And yet, at the same time, it's got a certain um, psychological effect based on the association. So you're really saying, that a stack of paper can feel good, aren't you, John? And that phrase uh, relates directly to a reference point of feeling good. So you, John, can feel good. And at the same time, you can look at this uh, as another follow-up association. I wonder how much better you will feel the paper stack shrinking. So what this can be used for is basically getting the individual to start thinking of the future outcome. Uh, because you don't just want to create secondary gain of feeling good with a stack of paper, you want them to do something with that stack of paper, uh, i.e. getting everything done and, and clear it up. So make that person feel good while they're clearing up the paper stack. So these are some examples of how selectional restriction violation process can be used 
And a lot of the times we do this very unconsciously. So while this appears a little bit more uh, conscious than you might be accustomed to, do bear in mind that not everyone is able to pick out these linguistic processes, utilize this in day-to-day conversations and day-to-day speech. Of course, that will take some time and some getting used to. And uh, this is really just an initial educational process. For more information on your training in neurolinguistic programming, make sure you register yourself at worldofnlp.com and I'll do my best to facilitate the learning process. So once again, this is Stuart Tan from worldofnlp.com signing off until I see you in my next video.